by compare glass and compare it with uh, quartz. Both of these are made out of SiO2. This is quartz. I beg your pardon, this is quartz. As you see, they are both made out of SiO2. There is interaction between the units of the solid, except one of them has a specific geometrical arrangement. We call it crystallized, we call it a crystal. That means you are getting a fixed geometry. Look at this geometry is being repeated all over the network of the solid. So solids can make crystalline substance. And then this is another form of solid when we are melting this IO2 and cooling it rapidly is going to make glass because molecules don't have enough time to make the geometrical arrangement which is needed to make a nice repetitive geometrical arrangement, we call them unit cell. So a solid can be amorphous. That means it doesn't have a clear crystal structure. Look at this. Do you see a smaller ring here? And do you see some rings are larger? Do you see there is no regularity between these uh, unit cells? They don't have unit cell, as you see in the crystalline compound. So we call this amorphous. And this happens when substances don't have enough time to make organized geometry, organized crystalline geometry and grow. So can I talk about other form of crystalline compound? So a crystalline compound, which you see here, can be ionic. For example, sodium chloride, which is result of ionic bond formation, makes cubic structure. The unit cell is a cubic. And the compound is crystalline compound. And what are the units of these crystalline compounds? They're ions. You're going to see sodium chloride, sodium surrounded by six Cl minus ions. And every Cl minus ion is surrounded by six sodium ion. And crystalline solid can be made from covalent compounds. For example, diamond. Diamond is made from carbon only. And we know carbon doesn't make, usually doesn't make ionic bond. Carbon makes covalent bond. And you are going to see that the crystal structure of diamond is carbon, one carbon in the center of a tetrahedral connected to four carbons sitting on the corner of tetrahedral. This is the crystal structure of carbon where you are going to see a carbon sitting in the corner of a tetrahedron and then one bond is going to the back, one bond is coming out. So you have got carbon here, carbon here, and carbon here, carbon here. And then each carbon in its own is connected to another carbon. Also have this framework of carbons connected together by covalent bond and crystallized form of this makes diamond, which is the strongest material that we can make. And then there is another form of crystallized substances. They are called metallic crystalline solid. They are neither ionic nor covalent. Why do we call them metallic crystalline solid? I'm going to show it on the next slide, where this is an example of covalent crystalline solid. You know water is a covalent substance. You know, these bonds are made by sharing of electrons between hydrogen and oxygen. And this is ice. And if you look at the crystal structure of ice, you are going to see these hexagonal structures. 
being repeated and making crystals. And as you see, there is hydrogen bonding here, hydrogen bonding here, the yellow atoms are hydrogen, the reds are oxygen, and you make this beautiful hexagonal structure, which is being repeated in forming the crystal of ice. So this is what you see. In fact, do you see there are spaces here? In the middle of this hexagonal structure, you see a space. And in fact, that is why when water freezes, the volume of water is increased because there are hexagonal structure where inside this hexagonal structure, there is empty space. So this shows the covenant structure of water. And then an example of metallic crystalline, which is different from covalent and ionic one, is shown here where, do you remember we said electrons and metals? Metals are excellent electron donors. So we have a metallic solid, the metals are losing electrons, they're excellent electron donor. So you see formation of ion here. These are metals with neutral. They used to have neutral charge. They have lost electron. Now they are positively charged. And you see ocean of electrons which are holding these ions together. That's why metals have very strong dimensional stability. So this three-dimensional structure, which is representative of metallic crystals. 